Hi, and welcome to our YouTube channel, The History Squad. Uh, we're doing a little series of films, it might go on knowing me, about this day in history, but each film, I'm looking for a twist in the tale. And what we're doing today, on this day in history, 30th of January, 1649, the execution of Charles I, King of England. He'd been found guilty of treason. After seven years of civil war, he'd been defeated, put on trial. Oh, the story is so involved. And it's not that simple. It wasn't just treason, yeah? But that's for you to read. I'm going to talk about his execution and the twist in the tale. This man, he wasn't very tall, it just under five foot, if I remember correctly. Others would say, no, he was over five foot. Well, after the execution, he was short by a head. <laughs> Sorry, a little joke there. Now, Charles I, he walked to his execution across St. James's Park, freezing January day. So he'd, he'd requested an extra shirt so he didn't shiver in front of his captors. He was escorted by a regiment of soldiers. Nobody could get anywhere near him, but he walked proud, yeah? And when he had to wait three hours, actually just wait before he would appear on the scaffold, he had to climb out of a window at the banqueting house in London and then walk on this black draped um, executioners, I suppose you call it a, a stage almost, yeah? And it got sand round by the block, but the block itself was only about four inches. So the king had to lie down. Now I question this, and one of the stories I'd heard many years ago was the block and the ax had been pinched, somebody would stolen it. So they had to improvise. Now I don't know if that's true. If you've got any input on this, comment section, let's get some conversation going because the poor king had to lie face down. People couldn't see him, they couldn't hear his speech because in front of this gallows, yeah, was this rank upon rank of soldiers keeping the people away. The king had a white nightcap on, he tucked his hair in it. As he lay down though, he was gonna give a signal, outstretch his arms and then bang, the execution could take off his head. This is a brave man, calm. Yeah, but the executioner must have touched the back of his neck, whether it's with the axe or with the, I took some hair in or something. And the king said, no, no, I'm not ready yet. And the executioner, you know, oh, I'm sorry and all that kind of stuff. And then the king, pff, arms out, heads off. Executioner holds it up. Now two versions, holds it up. Behold the head of a traitor. Yeah, but others say he didn't say a word, but he dropped the head into the soldier's at the foot of the, uh, the the deck there, you know? And they just snipped off hair and dipped their handkerchiefs in blood. Well, this is the twist in the tale. You see, the body was buried. St George's Chapel, Windsor, about eight days later, it had been embalmed and it was uh, encased in lead. He was buried in the tomb of Henry VIII. That should be the end of it. However, George III's reign, so I understand, workmen disturbed it. The body was checked out. Well, I've got another story. And this one, I love it. You see, the workman story is just, he was identified as Charles I. But there's an alternative story that when they uncovered his face, it was perfect. Well, of course it had been sealed against the air. But the second they opened the veil that covered his face and the lead, his eyes that shone blue suddenly turned white and appeared to blink, blink as the body decomposed. Bang! Can you imagine that? Yeah? Oh my goodness me! He's alive! No, he's not. He's dead. Because somebody who was present put their hand to check that the king's head had been severed. Have we got the right guy? And they took a piece of vertebrae out and kept it. The body was resealed reburied in the tomb of Henry VIII. And years later, it transpires that Queen Victoria, so the story goes, heard that this guy had got this bone that he put salt in on his table for dinner guests. And she ordered that it be replaced into the coffin. So was Charles I dug up twice? Was it workmen who deserved it? Or is there another tale? Comment section. 
join in the conversation because I love these stories. These are stories that I've heard. Are they true? Yeah, so I hope you've enjoyed our little film here. If you have, thumbs up, subscribe, ding the bell. Thank you very much.